Tim, welcome to Watch You Want and thanks for logging on. Today we're looking at the Roger Dubuis Sympathy 34mm 18 karat rose gold. This Roger Dubuis Sympathy can be seen and purchased on our website, WatchYouWant.com. And if you enjoy these videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Watch You Want Inc. Now this is one for the purists. To give a shout out to my spiritual home on the internet, one of the original launch models from the Roger Dubuis brand, the Sympathy was issued in 37 and 34 millimeter variants. And the one I have here is the 34. This watch wears incredibly easy. On my wrist, six and a third inches, 16 centimeters in circumference. You can see it does wear a fairly large 44 or 34, I should say, because of the shape of the case and the strong jutting lugs. But there is absolutely no problem with fit. Having a rounded bezel and a low profile eight millimeter thick case, you're gonna have no trouble with the dress cuff here. And because it has a total lug to lug span that is between extremities at the edge of the lugs, of only 42 millimeters, you can wear this watch on as small a wrist as you like. Even if your wrist is 14 centimeters, this watch is gonna be a good fit. With a nice flat case back and a fantastically close coupled lug spacing, this is a watch that has immense visual presence for a minimum amount of visual, or rather physical surface area. This is a watch that I would say definitely punches above its weight in terms of its appearance in the flesh. Now you can see a 34 millimeter round watch here, my JLC Master Ultra Thin 34, and you can see the difference that's made by the Carlos Diaz designed case flanks of this Roger Dubuis in 34. Now Diaz was the designer and the business brains behind the Roger Dubuis brand. Roger Dubuis had impact, basically impact on things like watchmaking standards, uh, how the cases, how the movements, the dials would be finished, things that were pertinent to horology. Diaz was the stylist, and in a lot of ways, Roger Dubuis was their child jointly. So the shape, I should mention, although characteristic of the early sympathies, is even less common because this early variant features the conforming crystal and dial. Later on, these conforming crystals, the sapphires with the same facets and flow of the case and the dial, were discontinued in favor of a completely round variant that was cheaper to make and easier to fit, but these early models feature almost as much blood, sweat, and tears in the junction between crystal and case as the movements themselves, which are Geneva Seal. These are rare watches from the earliest low volume days of Roger Dubuis production, and because of the difficulty of making them and the short period in which they were produced, they are exceptionally rare collectible pieces. Now, Roger Dubuis and Carlos Diaz opted for a rather audacious take on high horology. Traditional finish, especially with respect to movements, but shapes that were avant-garde and unabashedly progressive. You can see the flank of the case alone has two steps. It has vertical brushing, it has polished facets on the bezel and the case back. And you can see that that vertical brushed pattern features divine compound curves, really. The way the case flows outward, but at the same time curves up and back in from case back to bezel is beautifully considered and wonderfully executed. All of this is hand finish. And even today, essentially approaching 20 years after its debut, it remains just as striking. Now the lugs are part of the process here of making this watch read as large as it does. You can see they're strong and they're distinct. They're not tapered like those on the JLC I showed you earlier. Each one is welded and then the welding seam itself is finished down so that the junction appears seamless. It really does seem to be an extension of the case, although it reads as a separate strident and strong structure in its own right. Now brushed on the sides, it matches the brushing of the case, yet polished on its top so it matches the finish of the bezel. Each one features screw fixed pins on both sides at both ends. Now, Having a threading and a screw is much more robust than spring pins. It's also more expensive and more difficult to execute. But this is one respect in which Roger Dubuis cut no corners, and the strong element of the integrated screw increases the presence of this watch. It almost has the same kind of butch, effortless cool as rivets on old school Levi's jeans. I really like that look. Now, the bezel itself features complex contours that terminate in the flow of that gorgeous conforming crystal. Inboard of that, you can see a railroad style minutes track with outboard hashes that actually segment each of the individual seconds or minutes of the track. 
Now I'm going to start the watch up again, which you can see features hacking seconds, and as you follow that last seconds hand around the track, you can see inset outboard of each of the stylized Roman numerals is a separate red Arabic minutes indication. So the watch features small splashes of red on top of the black calibrations of the minutes and seconds, as well as a sort of, I'm, I'm going to call it a sort of brownish eggshell. It, it does have an eggshell off-white quality, not quite brown, not quite gold, not quite yellow, and of course not white or silver. It's a complex tone that adds richness to the dial, especially in concert with the gorgeous rose gold on the outside, and then that sort of salmon bronze at center. And therein lies a little bit of a juxtaposition, visually, that Carlos Diaz implemented in this design. While the case, the bezel, the sapphire, of course, the railroad track of the minutes and seconds traces the outline of the dominant shape. We now have a clashing circular portion at center, and that's where the watch goes from avant-garde to very traditional. You have a circular dial within this outlandish form, and then you have gorgeous, faceted, polished, rose gold dauphine hands and that very traditional lancet seconds. So we go from hyper modernist, almost a flight of fancy, to a very traditional center with that sort of bronzed salmon color, the circular form, the dauphine hands, and the lancet seconds. Roger Dubuis of Geneva, just above that, if you follow my finger, you'll notice it also mentions Bulletin d'Observatoire. What does that mean? Well, when you turn the watch over, it begins to come good. You see the Roger Dubuis caliber RD57 automatic winding based on the thin and fine La Magna 8815, formerly known as the Longines L990. This is a watch with a movement with a complicated history, I should say, dating back to the 70s during the sort of last gasps of the original era of mechanical watchmaking. A series of ultra thin movements came out, and this was one of the finest. Used by Breguet, used by Vianney Halter, Roger Dubuis, Ulysse Nordin. This is an ultra-thin movement that's been elaborated to Geneva seal standards, less than three millimeters thick despite having twin mainspring barrels and automatic winding, as well as hacking seconds. Roger Dubuis has taken it to the next level, and this is less Carlos Diaz and more Roger Dubuis. This was his contribution. You can see the gorgeous and finely textured linear Cote de Genève across the bridges, as well as the winding rotor. You can see this rose golden filigree style Roger Dubuis RD motif skeletonized into the rotor itself. You can see the swan's neck regulator on the balance assembly, black polished like all of the screw heads themselves camfered and slotted. It only reflects light in one direction, so smooth is the optical surface, and then it's brilliant, but only at that one angle. Otherwise, it's gray or black, hence the term poly noir or black polish. Now just below my thumb you can see the Geneva seal or Poinçon de Genève, the hallmark attesting to the highest standard of a watch finished in the city or canton of Geneva and that's integral to the identity of the watch as is that crest bulletin d'observatoire because not only is it Geneva seal it is also an observatory chronometer tested and timed at the French based observatory in Besançon, France it's a older standard of watchmaking observatory trials certification, quite different from the COSC system that's more commonly seen today. It's also a more demanding test, and because of the small number of watches submitted to this certification, it ensures an exclusivity and a pedigree, as well as a link to real history that adds a great deal of enthusiast value to this watch. Now, as I mentioned, hacking seconds, automatic winding, 40-hour power reserve, also exceptionally thin. This is a watch that has a lot of historical as well as horological interest and being a Roger Dubuis sympathy from the very launch of the line it is first class in every sense. In fit, finish, appearance and in the sense that it is a pioneer it was part of that first class of Roger Dubuis watches. 34 millimeters, effortlessly elegant, plainly discreet but anything but plain. You can see this Roger Dubuis Sympathy 34mm in 18 karat rose gold on our website, watchyouwant.com.